Hey guys, Brendan No Productions here, and welcome to Making a S Snake Game in Java Part 6. So in the last couple tutorials, we actually um, have managed to create a working snake game where you actually can pop in and uh, go ahead and uh, actually play snake. Now there are a few problems with this, um, as we figured out. For example, you cannot turn on yourself without killing yourself. So this is one thing that we actually need to address. So when you actually place a key, the first thing we need to do is make sure that we're not currently traveling in the opposite direction of what you want to travel in. So we want to say, so for example, if you press up, we want to make sure you're not traveling south so you don't run into yourself. So if direction is not, um, so if not direction, not direction dot if, sorry, direction is not equal to, we can do this because we're dealing with integers, because our enumerations are integers. So if direction is not equal to direction dot south, then, well, we can go ahead and say, actually, instead of doing that, we can just tab this in. Then we, if we're not traveling down, we can go ahead and go up. If the direction, so if we want to switch to south, we want to make sure that the direction is not direction dot north. And then for organization's sake, we're going to tab that in. If we press right, we want to make sure we're not traveling left. So if direction is not equal to direction dot west. And if we want to travel left, then we want to make sure we're not traveling right. So, oh wait. Yeah, so if direction is not equal to direction dot east, which is right, then we're going to go ahead and do that. So now, if we actually run our application, you can see that if we go ahead and turn right and try to turn on ourselves, it won't let us, and we just end up crashing into the wall, which is always a good thing. It's always a good thing. Okay, so as you can see, this was a really f simple fix. Um, when you press the key, we just wanted to make sure we're not traveling in the opposite direction of what we actually pressed. So this uh, game is actually coming out to be quite nice. Um, there are a few things that we need to fix. First of all, I figured out that when you start, you can't actually start going down because your head seems to be at the bottom of, or at the top, and going down would actually kill yourself. So what we need to do is we actually need to start the snake at the top left here with its butt at the very end and its head at the uh, at the beginning. So instead of adding a point at 3, 1, we're actually going to add a point at the x-coordinate of 0. Uh, keep in mind that this is going to be the head. So 0, 2, um, 0, 1, and then 0, 0. So I believe this is the behavior that we want. Um, you know that'll work. That's not actually what I wanted, but you know what? That'll work. So now um, if we go ahead and reset ourselves, we can actually travel right, and the head is the guy on the bottom. So that works properly. Now, as you can see, um, going down, we can actually go... How did I do that? Okay, so we can actually go down into a space that's um, not allowed, as long as it's on the border, one on the border. So we actually need to take a look at our... Um, calculations here. So if new point dot x is less than 0, which is good because the the left point is 0, and new point dot x is greater than grid width. So keep in mind that these are all indices, and the grid width is actually um, one less than... Um, the grid width is actually one more than the actual indice. So if we're greater than grid width, then we might as well be in the 1. So we're going to have to say grid width minus 1. Because since we're dealing with indices, we're comparing indices to actual number values. So what we want to do is make sure that if the um, the indice is greater than grid width minus 1. So this is more of an indice conversion. So you see the same behavior with the grid height. So if grid height uh, minus 1. So now we shouldn't be able to go beyond the wall here. And it should actually kill us. So let's go ahead and check it out. Yes, and that did the trick. So now we are not actually able to venture on outside beyond our walls. So now we've got really basic snake behavior down. Uh, we've got the running around as a snake. We can pick up dots, and we can actually grow. We actually also have dying, which is good. So we've got the basic game down. 
Now we can actually address the mechanics of the game. So, for example, a little while ago, there was actually a bug where it started randomly flashing. I don't know if I can actually replicate it. And I'm sure if you guys are running this tutorial, or doing this tutorial, and you're actually running on lower-end computers, or computers that um, don't have as much processing power as mine does, because mine's a beast, um, you're actually probably going to get flashing every couple seconds, because um, the screen is actually refreshing, and what it's doing is it's trying to draw everything at once. So what we need to do to solve this is we actually need to use a technique of double buffering. Now there's actually double buffering built into Java that we can use, however that's a little too advanced for what we're looking for because we just need something simple to fix with our little simple snake game, right? Right. So in order to alleviate this, what we need to do before drawing um, our stuff onto the screen is we actually need to draw it onto another image outside of the screen. So what we want to do is draw it to another image. We want to build a whole other image. And then um, once we built that entire other image, we can go ahead and just paste the image onto the screen. It's like building a billboard and then, or it's like taking a already made picture and putting it onto a billboard instead of trying to make the picture directly on the billboard. Hopefully you get that analogy. So let's go ahead and end this by crashing into ourselves. Okay. So let's go ahead and figure that out now. So what we want to do is instead of actually drawing everything onto the global graphics directly, we want to actually clear the global graphics, draw everything onto an alternate image, and then paste the image onto our global graphics. So the first thing we want to do is create a new image to draw to. So create a new image. So we're going to create a new buffered image. We're going to call it blank, uh, or we're just going to call it um, we're going to call it billboard because of that analogy. No, we're just going to call it. So this is going to be, well, this is going to be the buffer. And we're going to set it to a new buffered image. And then um, it's going to want a width and a height and an image type. So the width is going to be the same width as what we're drawing, which is going to be our box width times our grid width. And then our box height times our grid height for the height. And then it's going to want an image type. So we're just going to go ahead and send in buffered image dot type uh, int ARGB, which is a basic type that supports RGB colors and alpha transparency. So if we ever want to get um, crazy with the alpha transparency, we can. So now that we've got this buffered image, what we want to do is we actually want to save the graphics of this image. So we're going to say graphics buffer graphics equal to buffer dot get graphics. So what we're doing with this is we're actually just getting the graphics to draw directly on that image. This is our paintbrush, if you will, for this canvas. So the next thing we want to do is we want to draw everything onto our canvas using our paintbrush. So we're going to change all of these G, which are global graphics. Um, we're actually going to change all of them to buffer graphics. So now what we've got is we actually got an image called buffer in this case. Um, because we named it that, and it now has everything that we want drawn onto the image. Now what we need to do is do what's called a flip, which is simply taking what we have on our screen currently and drawing our image onto it. So we want to say g.drawImage, and our image is going to be buffer, the x is going to be 0, y is going to be 0, um, the width is going to be, of course, box width times grid height, or grid width rather, and the height is going to be box height uh, times grid height. And then we don't need these x, these extra x and y's, and then we just want our image observer to be this, which is our canvas. So now that we do our flip, um, what, we <laughs> flip. what we do is we simply create a new image, um, we get the paintbrush for this image, if you will, the graphics object, and then we draw all of them to the image using that paintbrush, using that graphics object. And then we do the flip. So we have this image called buffer, and it's just an image floating out in space. Nobody can see it. So we want to make it visible by painting it onto our screen using our global graphics here. So let's go ahead and test this out. So as you can see, um, everything happens to work, and everything runs really smoothly, except the only problem is, well, our grid didn't draw. So why is this? Well, in order to actually check out why our grid didn't draw, let's go ahead and go back. So what we do is we actually send in our draw grid for buffer graphics, which would be totally fine, but um, for some reason, it didn't like that. So if we look at our draw grid method, what we do is we say g.drawRect, so we draw a rectangle, 
then we draw some vertical lines, then we draw some horizontal lines, and um, that's that. So why didn't it like our grid? That is the question. Now we can obviously simply say, let's not have a grid, because most snake games don't actually have a grid. Um, and we can actually just run with what we have here. However, I feel like that would be cheating since we have our grid and we don't want to use it. So what we can try to do is, as you can see here, we have the snake and the fruit, and this could just be an a, a issue of ordering. So we're just going to put the grid on top by making it being drawn last. And as you can see, this happened to fix it. Um, however, now everything has little grid marks in it, which is no problem at all, but um, we don't really want that. So what happens if we put it in between the snake and the fruit? So that seems to work as well. However, if we put it before the snake, that simply doesn't work. So what we can do is, what, what if we put it between the fruit and the snake? That seems to do the trick. So now, as you can see, our snake currently re is constantly on top of the grid as, oops, as um, planned, and our fruit is also um, in the grid. Now, the reason the grid is not on top of the fruit is because our circle for the uh, fruit actually fits inside one of the cells on our grid. So that's actually perfect. Oh my gosh. Oh, that's stressful. That is so stressful. Ugh! Oh my god, I just want to approach it from the top. Oh, man! Okay. Alright. Obviously, this game is extremely stressful. So now, there you have it. We now have a working snake game. Now, the only thing that we can really add to make this better is we can actually add either a menu and a score and a little screen that says, you lose right after you lose, or something like that. So we can go ahead and jump on that right now. Uh, this is so distracting. When you create something like this, it's just so distracting. Okay, but first let's clean up a bit. Um, our classes here, we never actually used the tile type class that we originally planned to use. So let's go ahead and delete that. And let's go ahead and actually add a score. So the score shouldn't be too hard. Uh, what we want to do is we actually just want to make a private variable called score. So private int score, and we're just going to set that equal to zero. So every time you collect a fruit, the score is going to increase by 10. So we're just going to say every time the snake has hit fruit, we're going to say score plus equals 10. And um, then um, when you lose, we actually want to set the score equal to zero. So when we generate the default snake, since that's the thing called when we lose, we can just pop in score equals zero, run with generate default snake. And now we've got a working score mechanism. Fairly simple, right? Right, when you know what you're doing, programming is really easy. I think, at least. So now the final thing we need to do is we actually need to draw the score display onto our screen. Now the only problem with this is our score display actually needs to be off our grid. And um, we've actually made everything so all it draws is the grid. Um, and actually we've made it so it draws just short of the grid. So what we can actually do is we can actually, well, we can go ahead and change everything so the score is displayed. So what we want to do is we actually want to make a new method called draw score. So we're just going to pop it right in here above the draw grid method. And we're going to say public void draw score and send in a graphics g object as a parameter. And then all we want to do is say g dot uh, draw or rather yeah draw string. And we're just going to say score colon, and then say plus our current score, which is score. And then the x position is going to be 0, and the y position, so we're going to pop this on the bottom of the grid. So the y position is going to be box height times grid height, and we're just going to add 10 to that. So it's just going to be right below that. So now all we need to do is make sure that this fits. So we're going to take this number, and we're going to make sure that all of our images now contain that number. So in the draw method, um, instead of clearing the rect on that, we're going to actually make our height of plus 15. We're going to actually 20. We're going to allow 10 pixels 
for um, the text to actually be. So when we draw and we clear the screen, instead of just clearing that grid, we're also going to clear the grid and where the score should be. Uh, so we're going to do the same thing with this new buffered image. When we create the buffered image, we're actually going to make it as big as um, the score should actually allow. And then when we draw the buffered image back onto the screen, we're just going to draw it where, with the score. So now if we go ahead and run our snake game, you can see that the score still does not display. And that is because in our draw method, we actually never called draw score buffer graphics. And as you can actually see too, um, with our new drawing, we're, we don't have the score, but we also can now see the bottom of the grid because we actually allowed the extra pixels for that line to be drawn. So now if we actually click this, you can see that our score increases. So now we actually have a working snake game um, where you can actually go ahead and play and you get a score and it's all good. Um, now what you can do is you can actually, now what we have is we have boxes being drawn for each one of the snake's body parts. However, what you can do is you can also um, go ahead and replace these with images. You can replace the fruit with images. You can change the design to be gridless by omitting the draw grid section of the code. Um, but I believe this pretty much concludes our snake game. Uh, we just need to make flashy menus and stuff like that. So in the next part, that's what we'll be making our flashy menus. When you die, it'll say you die. Um, we can actually make a menu for the beginning where you can click play. Um, and then uh, when you die, it'll also display your score and all that. But as for now, the last thing I want to do in this part is actually go ahead and adjust the right hand side so we can actually see the end of the grid. So while drawing the box width times box or grid width, I'm just going to allow plus 10 pixels and go ahead and copy that. And then so we're actually drawing the images, we're just going to allow plus 10 pixels on every side. So now if we actually run the application, you can see that we can now see our full grid. So it's actually late at night and I've been making these tutorials for maybe three hours in a row now. Um, but we now have a working snake game. Um, if you have any questions about this snake game or what we've been doing so far, if you totally misunderstood what I was saying, please don't hesitate to ask. Um, me and everybody that's watching these videos loves to help. So don't hesitate to ask. Shoot over a comment on this video. Or you can go ahead and follow the link in the description to BP Forums, where everybody will be talking about this video. Uh, hopefully. But... As far as the next tutorials goes, in the next few parts, I will add a um, a main menu. We'll add a little victory screen. We can um, upload this game to our servers very easily, so people can play it through their web browsers. On top of that, we can also make a desktop version of this by simply making it being able to run um, in a window in a desktop window, and we can also. Um, add high scores so people can actually compete. Now keep in mind that high scores on an online game are actually a little tough uh, because that involves actually relaying with a server, so storing information on a server. And with that you have to use um, a JSocket, I believe, but I'm not quite sure. So we'll just we'll just leave um, writing high scores to playing locally. But as far as that goes, I'm probably going to forget everything that I just said in the next couple next couple minutes. So. Um, and I'm going to, since all of these tutorials were actually made in one night, I'm going to pick them up uh, maybe tomorrow or the next day. So I might actually forget everything that I just said. But so far, we have a working snake game, and everything is just hunky-dory with this little snake game. So thanks for watching these tutorials. Please stay tuned for more. Um, I'll put them up as soon as possible. And I really do hope you enjoyed. Please remember to rate, comment, and subscribe. And enjoy playing snake. All right. Peace, guys. Bye.